how do you get somebody who for the last 10 to 15 years has just been completely destroying themselves self-talk wise begin to build some consistency with that. So now that becomes a new habit that they're talking to themselves in a more positive way and they actually believe it instead of just saying it. This is a phenomenal and really smart question. If you have been trashing yourself for 10 years, you do have a cognitive dissonance. You don't even hear it anymore right. because that negative, you're not good enough, you screw everything up, first began as something you said, then it became a belief. Your brain started to align with the belief and it starts to become your identity. I always screw things up. And I want you to hear me loud and clear. If you are on social media and you ever go to the discover page on Instagram or on TikTok or on any platform, that social media platform has put together a mosaic of content that aligns with everything that you consume in your feed. That's, that social media platform on the Discover page has assembled a world on social media that looks just like the stuff you're always looking at. Your brain works exactly the same way. One of the reasons why it is so important for you to identify how often you are trashing yourself or being pessimistic or you are being negative in your attitude and unkind to yourself is because as long as you think and speak that, the discover page of your mind presents a world that matches to that negative dialogue. So that's why this is critical. The second thing that you need to do because you're unconscious to it, right? Is there are two things that are going to work because just trying to speak kindly often doesn't work because you have so trained your mind that you think you're not good enough that saying I'm good enough doesn't work because your brain literally looks at you and like, who are you talking to? Like I, cause I can't be you. So there's two things that will help you based on the research. The first one is journaling exercises, because there is something that happens when you create a new habit where every single morning before you look at that social media, you open up a blank page and the way that I journal is very simple. I always start by writing down five things that I want. And I just let them flow through me. What are five things that I really want? And it might be something small. It might be that, you know, I, I want a really cool new pair of sneakers. It might be something big. I really want to feel happy. And so allowing yourself to write down five things that you want. I want to feel like myself again. It allows the, the things that you desire to flow through the self-doubt and through the negativity and through all the crap that buries it and pushes it down and it allows it to come to the surface. And the writing it down is important because your mind is paying attention. That discover page that your mind creates pays attention to what you say is important. And if you begin a new habit of just starting your day with a blank piece of paper and writing down five things that you want, Every day, it can be the same things every day. It can be different things every day. You just allow yourself to do this. You will start to build the skill of being connected to what you desire. You will start to develop a skill of tuning out the self-doubt and tuning into what you want. And this is really important because your brain is paying attention and it doesn't require you to talk to yourself. It just write it on a piece of paper. The next thing that you're gonna do, step two, is write down why you want these things. Because if you have a negative dialogue, Doug, you have for decades talked yourself out of the things that you want. You have filled your heart and your soul and your mind with all the reasons why it's never gonna happen. And so by starting every day with a new habit, write down five things that you want and then write down why you want these things. You are developing a skill of listening 
to what you want instead of listening to the self-doubt. That's step one. That's one thing that you can do to fight decades of negative self-talk. The second thing that you can do is every morning after you brush your teeth, add a high five in the mirror to your reflection, to your morning routine. That will have a shockingly powerful impact on your negative self-talk. And the reason why it does is because your brain watches you do it and you only give a high five to somebody that you believe in, that you're rooting for, that you're kind to, and that you want to see win. And what we've found based on researching this simple habit, adding a high five to the mirror every single morning, you don't say a word, as stupid as it sounds, just high five the mirror. What we have found after researching this for 18 months and having 153,000 people from 91 countries do this for five days is that it has a profound effect on how you speak to and how you see yourself because it is an action that demonstrates to your brain that you care about yourself and you support yourself. And so those are two physical things that you can do to start to shut down and fight back against the critic that is programmed into your head. I think it's amazing that you've kind of put together this 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 high five habit, but also you invite people to do deeper work as well. It's not as simple as just saying, hey, give yourself a high five and then your life's going to be fixed. It's like, no, you encourage people to do other things. You're talking about developing something called some things called like self-awareness where you're actually becoming aware of like like what it is that it's that's bothering you, what it is that you want. And then also like writing down like why I think is so important because I'm a trainer, so I see this a lot in the fitness space where people don't put an emotional connection to their fitness goals. They say, oh, I just want to lose weight. And it's like, that's not what they want. People want to be able to look at themselves in the mirror and be proud of their health. That's the emotional connection, right? People want to be able to carry the groceries up and down their, their steps when they get older. They want to be able to walk their daughter down the aisle. They want to be able to play with their kids when they get older. Like Those are the real reasons. And so I'm so glad that you brought that up. Uh, can I share something? Because yeah. I think that, that that's a wildly important point, Doug, and it is completely missed by most of us. And I'm going to tell two stories. So, you know, I, every single morning, uh, as part of my morning routine, I write down five things that I want in my journal, and then I write down why. And what's been really interesting about adding this practice to my morning routine is that I didn't realize because of the cognitive dissonance, I'm just so used to feeling like I don't deserve to be happy or that something's wrong or focusing on what's wrong or beating myself up, that I was completely unaware of how much I was silently suffering in my life. It just was the autopilot mode I was on to focus on what wasn't working, to push myself relentlessly, to point out what I was doing wrong, that it wasn't until I started writing down five things that I wanted and the why I wanted these things that was really important. Because at the bottom of every why that you come up with is the singular thing that every human being wants. And that is, I just want to feel like I'm seen, that I'm happy, that I deserve to have these things just because I want them, that I am enough of a person for simply being alive, that it's okay for me to just want to feel better and happier. And, you know, when you talk about, for example, you just mentioned this example that you're a trainer and you have people come into the gym and just saying, I want to get in better shape is not enough. If you want to tap into the internal desire to change, go deep and get to the heart of the embarrassing thing 
that you don't want to say. Because saying, I, I need to lower my cholesterol, that's not going to get you to have the force inside you to push yourself out of bed on a cold morning when it's seven degrees, like it was in Vermont this morning, and get out of bed and go exercise. But if you say, I haven't had my shirt off in public in 15 years, and I am tired of feeling like the most out of shape person, I am tired of my own behavior being a form of rejection. And I want to get in shape because I deserve to be proud of myself. And I want a six pack because I want to take my shirt off and I want to feel great about my body. And I want to experience an amazing orgasm that will motivate you. You're so right. And a lot of times people will come to me and I'll ask them like three or four whys. Like, so if somebody says, I'll walk you through this, somebody says, I want to lose weight. Well, why? Well, because I'm just not fitting right in my clothes. And I'll say, well, why does that bother you so much? And it's like, well, you know, it's like my belt's starting to get a little tight and I feel uncomfortable when I'm going out. And I'm like, well, why does that bother you so much? And then they'll, then normally they'll get like an emotional response. Like, you know, like I'll come home and just bawl my eyes out because all of my friends go to the gym, they work out, they're in shape and I just can't seem to do it. And boom, there you go. And if I were to ask the, another why, I mean, what I normally would get is like, this is it. They're like, I'm just so tired of feeling unworthy. I'm so tired of feeling like I'm not enough. I'm so tired of being unhealthy, even though I should be doing it to take care of my family. And that's where you can really start to attach emotion to, to changing because when you don't want to go to the gym, it's not like, ah, I'm not going to the gym. I only want to lose weight. It's like, no, I better go to the gym because of what I, I, I told my trainer I wanted to do or what I told myself I wanted to do. I want to do this for my family. I want to do this for my self-esteem. I want to do this for me because I deserve it. Game changes, right? Yeah. You're not going to feel motivated or inspired to do the work. If you say, no, I deserve to be happy. And I know this is going to make a difference. You are building the skill of self-empowerment. You see, it's a skill to push yourself through the resistance that you're going to feel when you have to create a new habit. It's a skill to tune out the self-doubt and to push yourself and do it anyway. It is a skill to listen to a more positive voice in your head and tune out the negative one that you've been listening to for 20 years. And so instead of thinking in terms of habits and all these kind of patterns of behavior, I want you to think about the fact that what habits create in your life is they create skills. And self-awareness is a skill. Pushing yourself to take action when you're afraid or, or not feeling like it, that's a skill. Being kind to yourself, that's a skill. And when you have something as a skill in your life, you can use that skill to help you in every area of your life.